Can you see me? Can you see me? Here we are. Six in the morning. Beautiful, beautiful. February day. February. Very quiet out here. Ain't nobody up. Nobody's awake. Just me and the dog. No cat today. Must be sleeping. Anyways, I want to kind of jump on here real quick. Well, we'll see how quick. <clears throat> it appears that the uh, the hammer is about to uh, fall and fall very hard. I was watching a bunch of videos and uh, yeah, there's a lot of pissed off people with the social medias and everything else. With uh, oh, here comes the cat now. Yeah, so with those social medias and all the court appearances and the court hearings right now, all over the place, it is getting quite ridiculous. And uh, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Like I said, the hammer is about to fall and it looks like it's going to fall hard. Now, a lot of people are celebrating this and celebrating uh, the potential of the uh, pendulum swinging the other direction. Well, unfortunately, I think that pendulum it's not going to be a very good thing. You see, a pendulum is going to swing and it's going to swing hard. And it's going to potentially break a lot of stuff along the way. So, I am predicting now that this pendulum swinging the other way is not going to be a good one. Not at all. Especially with what's coming down the, down the uh, pipeline with uh, the whole digital ID and everything else and, uh, you know, sign up to the B system or else. We already got Justin Trudeau running around going province to province saying, well, if you don't sign up with us, then <laughs> we're not giving you this and this and this and this. Then you got the chiefs across, uh, across this great nation who are basically selling out the native people and selling off the land again. You know, all in the name of colonization for people like Justin Trudeau and World Economic Forum. Basically selling everybody out for money. And uh, trying to get this digital ID rammed down everybody's throat with the pendulum swinging the other way. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> going to crash, people. It's going to crash hard. Especially with the hammers coming down. All these people trying to throw the trust into the government. It's, uh, not looking pretty. So what's going to happen when these two collide the way I think it's going to happen? It's going to be a mess. Things are going to be busted. All I got to say is, everybody, just get your hammers ready. Shine your hammers up. Because it's going to be hammer time. In more ways than one. And, uh, yeah, but I mean, with people asking to, you know, why, how do you do this and that? Why are you so radical? You know, why, why is everybody going so radical? I said, well, look around, dude. We got radicalization from one end to the other. We're just all caught in the middle. It's just that a lot of people haven't realized that yet. You're caught in the middle of all of this. And when I talk about the pendulum swinging and the hammers crashing down, who are they going to come down on? Us. So maybe it's best that we get a little bit more radical ourselves. Or what's deemed to be radicalization. Is it really radicalized? Like, is it really radical? A radical idea to want to, say, walk your dog down the road in peace? Oh, no, you won't be able to do that soon. Grow your own food. That's a radical concept now. So explain to me uh, about radicalism again. Because I guarantee a lot of you are probably just as radical as me. Mr. Ross. 
You are no stranger to conspiracies and their real world consequences. If you don't mind, can you please describe for the committee how the release of the so-called Twitter files has affected your personal safety? Thank you for the question, Congresswoman. The Twitter files, I would note first and foremost, didn't just affect me, but affected much more junior employees at Twitter. Employees as far away as Manila in the Philippines were doxxed, had their families threatened, and experienced harm equal to or, or greater than what I've experienced. And following the Daily Mail's decision to publish where I live, ultimately I had to leave my home and sell it. Those are the consequences for this type of online harassment and speech. Oh, that's that. I must say, those are very real consequences. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Twitter files were not just about Hunter Biden's laptop. Twitter worked overtime to suppress accurate COVID information. Apparently, the views of a Stanford doctor are disinformation to you people. I, along with many Americans, have long-term effects from COVID. Not only was I a long hauler, but I have effects from the vaccine. It wasn't the first shot, but it was the second shot that I now developed asthma that has never gone away since I had the second shot. I have tremors in my left hand, and I have the occasional heart pain that no doctor can explain, and I've had a battery of tests. I have great regrets about getting the shot because of the health issues that I now have that I don't think are ever going to go away. Where did you go to medical school? I did not go to medical school. I'm sorry. I did not go to medical school. That's what I thought. Why do you think you or anyone else at Twitter had the medical expertise to censor a doctor's expert opinion? Our policies regarding COVID were designed to protect individuals. We were seeing you guys censored Harvard educated doctors, Stanford educated doctors, doctors that are educated in the best places in the world and you silenced those voices. You're not a doctor, right, Ms. Gaddy? No, I'm not. Okay. What makes you think you or anyone else at Twitter have the medical expertise to censor actual, accurate CDC data? I'm not familiar with these particular situations. Yeah, I'm sure you're not. It's not just about the laptop. This is about medical advice that expert doctors were trying to give Americans because social media companies like Twitter were silencing their voices. Did the U.S. government ever contact you or anyone at Twitter to pressure Twitter to moderate or censor certain tweets? Yes or no? We have a program. Did the U.S. government ever contact you or anyone at Twitter to censor or moderate certain tweets? Yes or no? We receive legal demands to remove content from the platform from the U.S. government and governments all around the world. Thank God for Matt Taibbi. Thank God for Elon Musk for allowing to show us in the world that, that Twitter was basically a subsidiary of the FBI. Well, I found out yesterday um, that a gentleman by the name of Pascal Najati in Switzerland was able to get convinced the Swiss attorney general of the nation to prosecute the Swiss president and the minister of health for abuse of process. There are two other criminal defendants um, that are sealed at this moment in time, but the president himself and the minister of health are under investigation, indictment and prosecution by the Swiss attorney general. It's the first criminal complaint anywhere on the planet that has legs. This is the first time anywhere that anybody's been charged with these crimes. And it happened in Switzerland. I just heard about it yesterday. I'm also working with um, a royal family in Southeast Asia who had one of their family members killed. Um, they are able, by virtue of their lineage and power in that country, to convene their own war crimes tribunal. So we're, we're pursuing that outside of the United States because we can't get anything done inside the United States. The tide has changed. It's really changed. And now you're going to see the flood, like floodgates open. These are universal jurisdiction crimes, which means that if Switzerland wanted to prosecute our president, they would not only have the ability to do that and do that in absentia, they would have the ability to sentence and actually carry out that sentence. Uh, in, in absentia, meaning the extraterritorially, if they were able to find a treaty partner, they could go and grab whoever it is responsible, bring them back to Switzerland for the, the execution, if that's what the sentence was. This is a big deal. This is a huge deal. The first sovereign to do this. Thank you very much, Chairman Jordan, uh, Ranking Member Pl Plaskett, and members, aloha. Thank you for the opportunity to be here to speak with you today. Benjamin Franklin said, without freedom of thought, there can be no such thing as wisdom and no such thing as public liberty. Without freedom of speech, 
I love our country and I cherish our God-given freedoms that are enshrined in the Constitution. Like every one of you, I took an oath, both as a soldier and as a member of Congress, to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Now, I've had the privilege of serving alongside many of you in Congress for eight years, representing the people of Hawaii's 2nd Congressional District, serving on the Armed Services and Foreign Affairs Committees. I'm honored to be able to continue to serve as a Lieutenant Colonel in the U.S. Army Reserves now for almost 20 years, where during that time I deployed to three war zones and participated in multiple overseas training exercises, where I had the opportunity to see firsthand what life is like in countries where there is no First Amendment where there is no free press, where government deems itself to be the moral arbiter to its people, dictating to them what is right and wrong, what can and cannot be said, who can speak, who cannot, who is free to worship, and who is not. Now, our founders understood the importance of enshrining our God-given freedoms in the Constitution and Bill of Rights to ensure that no matter which party or person may be in power at any given time, our founding documents serve as a reminder of these freedoms that are guaranteed to every American. Thomas Paine said, he that would make his own liberty secure must guard even his enemy from opposition. For if he violates this duty, he establishes a precedent that will reach to himself. We cannot be so short-sighted as to thinking silencing speech that we don't like today will not result in our own voices being silenced tomorrow. The work that you've all been charged with in this committee affects all Americans, and it is too important to allow it to fall victim to partisan politics. No matter how deep your differences, we must all agree to stand on the side of liberty. Unfortunately, right now we live in a country where many Americans are afraid to speak freely, afraid to express themselves, afraid to actually have real open dialogue and debate, afraid of losing their job, being canceled, or being accused of a crime which could happen if recently introduced legislation criminalizing so-called hate speech is passed into law. Speech that, no matter how abhorrent, is still protected under the First Amendment. Now this fear and this culture of fear and self-censorship is not unfounded. We have individuals in our government often working through their arms in the mainstream media and big tech doing exactly what our founders rejected trying to control what we, the people, are allowed to see and say under the guise of protecting us from so-called misinformation or disinformation. Now, of course, they appoint themselves as the sole authority and voice of truth, of information, backed by the most lethal force on earth with the power to target anyone they deem a threat. They alone are the ones, self-designated, who get to decide what is true and what is false, what is information, and what is misinformation or disinformation. They say they're doing this for us, that they're doing this for our own good, to protect the people. But in reality, the truth is they think that we're too stupid to think for ourselves, too stupid to discern for ourselves and to draw our own conclusions. Now, the idea that we must just blindly accept whatever the government or those in power tell us is true goes against the very essence of our Constitution and Bill of Rights, which were created as a resounding rejection of the reign of kings, churches, and authorities. They tell us we must blindly trust them or face the consequences, even though our government has a long history of lying to us, the American people. Just to cite a few examples, we were lied to about the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, which spurred the war that I and so many others served in and so many others sacrificed their lives in. They lied for almost two decades, claiming success in Afghanistan, when in fact we saw failure after failure after failure coming at a great cost to this country. Mr. Roth, um, have you communicated with government officials ever on a platform called JIRA? Yes or no? Real quick answer, we're on the clock. Not yes to or no? the best of my recollection. Not no. to your recollection? Great. Have, if you did, in the event communicate, who would have had access to this platform? That's the nature of my confusion. Okay. Jira Did you ever speak to government officials on Jira regarding taking down social media posts? Again, not to the best of my recollection. Can you explain to me why the federal government would ever have interest in communicating through Jira, mind you, a private cloud server 
with social media companies without oversight to censor American voices. I want to let you know that this is a violation of the First Amendment, and the federal government is colluding with social media companies to censor Americans. Mr. Chairman, I ask for unanimous consent to submit these graphics into record. And Mr. Roth, I'm going to refresh your memory for you. This flow chart without objection, you. Ordered. Thank you, Chair. Um, this flowchart shows the following federal agencies, social media companies, Twitter, leftist nonprofits, and organizations communicating regarding their version of misinformation using JIRA, a private cloud server. On this chart, I want to annotate that the Department of Homeland Security, which has the following branches, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, also known as CISA, count, um, Countering Foreign Intelligence Task Force, now known as the Misinfo, Disinfo, and Malinformation, MDM. This was, again, used against the American people. The Election Partnership Institute, or Election Integrity Partnership, EIP, which includes the following Stanford Internet Observatory, University of Washington Center for Informed Public, Graphica, and Atlantic Council's Digital Forensic Research Lab, and potentially, according to what we found on the final report by EIP, the DNC. The Center for Internet Security, CIS, a nonprofit funded by DHS, the National Association of Secretaries of State, also known as NASS, and the National Association of State Election Directors, NASED. And in this case, because there are other social media companies involved, Twitter. What do all of these groups, though, have in common? And I'm going to, again, refresh your memory. They were all communicating on a private cloud server known as JIRA. Now, the screenshot behind, uh, screenshot behind me, which is an example of one of thousands, shows on November 3rd, 2020, that you, Mr. Roth, a Twitter employee, were exchanging communications on JIRA, a private cloud server, with CISA, NASS, NAS. NASED and Alex Stamos, who now works at Stanford and is a former security, of, um, security officer at Facebook to remove a posting. Do you now remember communicating on a private cloud server to remove a posting? Yes or no? I wouldn't agree with the characterization. I don't care if you agree. This, Do you, this, is, this is your stuff. Yes or no, did you communicate with a private entity the government agency on a private cloud server, yes or no? The question was if I could. Yes or no? Yeah, I'm on time. Yes or no? Ma'am, I don't believe I can give you a yes or no. Well, I'm going to tell question. you right now that you did, and we have proof of it. This, ladies and gentlemen, is joint action between the federal government and a private company to censor and violate the First Amendment. This is also known, and I'm so glad that there's many attorneys on this panel, joint state actors. It's highly illegal. You are all engaged in this action, and I want you to know that you will be all held accountable. Ms. Gaddy, are you still on CISA's Cybersecurity Advisory Council? Yes or no? Yes, I am. Okay. For those who have said that this is a pointless hearing, and I just want to let you guys all know, we found that Twitter was indeed communicating with the federal government to censor Americans. I'd like to remind you that this was all in place before January 6th. So to, so to say that these mechanisms weren't in place and to make it about January 6th, I want to let you know that you guys were actually in control of all of the content, and clearly we have proof of that. Now, if you don't think that this is important to your constituents and the American people from those saying that this was a pointless hearing, I suggest you find other jobs. Chairman, I yield my time. So this shot is still experimental. They're still trying to figure out exactly what is happening after people get injected with this stuff. And we know that myocarditis can now be an issue. Now, the problem that I have with this myocarditis is uh, a lot of these cases are completely subclinical. There are absolutely no symptoms whatsoever. So we have the potential of having two pilots in the cockpit now that got the shot, they might have myocarditis. And if they do, that's a very dangerous thing because all it takes to trigger a heart failure from a myocarditis uh, incident happening in your heart, all it's going to take is an adrenaline surge and just overexcitement from something that might happen during the flight. Now, I'll tell you, uh, Dr. Paul, aviation has been described as hours and hours and hours of boredom interspersed with just a few seconds of stark terror. And when that, that happens, that's when you get the adrenaline rush. And if you've got this subclinical myocarditis, it could, in fact, shut your heart down. The reason is because the myocarditis is actually disrupting the normal electrical flow of energy through your heart. 
And you can't detect this uh, on an EKG even. Uh, the pilot can't feel it, but it's, it's still there. And what it's doing is it's setting up what are called uh, ventricular fibrillations that are, that are very minor. But with that adrenaline rush that's going to immediately call for an increase of the heart rate and breathing and increased blood pressure, all of these things cascading on the heart at one time can indeed cause ventricular fibrillation where all of the little muscle cells are beating on their own, not in unison. The heart, the, the, the blood is not going to pump and there's your cardiac death. You, ladies and gentlemen, interfered with the United States of America 2020 presidential election, knowingly and willingly. That's the bad news. It's going to get worse because this is the investigation part. Later comes the arrest part. Your attorneys are familiar with that. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to spend five hours with these ladies and gentlemen doing depositions surely yet to come. But for right now, I yield the balance of my time to my colleague, Mr. Jordan. I thank you.